without further ado, let's chat about yesterday's game. We'll get into um, the match review for yesterday. Obviously, the 2-1 win against Burnley in what was... A night, well, we I was nice I'm about to say a nice way to cap off the season. It felt felt like a season ender yesterday, but we do have another home game, uh, obviously on Tuesday, which has now got increased. One minute, Spurs are in behind. Oh, it's just over the top. Um, it wasn't the best display, was it, Brian? Yesterday, uh, you know, we did end up getting the win, getting that two-one win, but it was just a very similar pattern, wasn't it, to a lot of our home games, especially in recent weeks against. Um, some of the teams in the bottom half of the table. Poor first half where we could easily be losing and we you know, we can see lots of opportunities and we miss a few chances and we look a bit lacklustre and we're not really on our game. And then second half, we dominated. We probably didn't really give Burnley too much in that second half and we pummeled them and we, we you know, made that pressure tell late in the game. But it was a very familiar pattern uh, from, from games earlier in the season, wasn't it? What did you make out of... Uh, uh, in terms of what you saw yesterday, what, did you think we deserved the win? Were you, were you happy with that or do you think we got lucky? Um, I'm happy we got the win, but I think we're fortunate. Listen, when you were saying about the first half, I saw a stat yesterday and I couldn't believe it. Since the turn of the year, a Tottenham Hotspur player has not scored the first goal at home in 2024. We got an award, obviously we, we got an own goal against Nottingham Forest, so not a Spurs player. And Hoybier scored an own goal against the Filth. So technically we're not talking. A Tottenham player hasn't scored the first goal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in twenty twenty four, which is a which is a horrifying stat. And it's it's concerning because we, we had second half Tottenham with Conte, didn't we? And it seems that we're we're doing it again with a different group of players in a different format. Um like you said, it was a, a strange game where in the first half, first half, sorry, there were, were bits that were bright, but other parts were just just poor. And we come alive in the second half. And when you look at it, our defenders are getting us out of jail, um, which is another yeah. concerning thing to be worried about. I mean, it's brilliant that Porro and Van der Ven and Romero have been contributing goals, but it's not really their job. And they've been the ones getting us out of jail. So uh, just happy we got the win. Just delighted we could actually end that drought and get three points. Yeah, in terms of that first half, obviously a few things happened that a few people were calling for. Obviously, Skip did start at left back. Decky started at left wing. Um, uh, obviously, Saar uh, came back in the team. Madison came back in the team. But what did you feel? What did you think of Decky on the left, which, you know, I, for one, uh, haven't been... Uh, really excited about that prospect but a lot of people have been calling for him to be given a go on that side uh, I felt he looked really uncomfortable there he didn't really want to go on the outside he didn't want to use his pace and take people on on the outside but how did you feel it went for him would you want to see that experiment pers persisted with or um, what did you think of it uh, so right I'm, I'm very happy that we're, we're talking about the um, predictability straight away um I, I have say something. Kulisevsky is one of the players you and me have often disagreed on or or seen the game differently uh, when we're watching it together. I put a tweet on Spurs' Twitter when they said that, and I said, seeing him in the starting 11 is mind-boggling to me. It really is. I don't understand. He, Especially after that Liverpool performance. But fair play, we tried him something different. We tried him on the left, and he still tried to cut in on his right this time. Um... He put in that one good cross for Johnson, where Johnson wears a good save by the keeper. And then he did what he's been doing recently, which is run around a lot, give away needless fouls, and <coughs> excuse me, and be very predictable. I listen, I, I think when we signed him under Conte and when he played in the Conte system that first six months, breath of fresh air and devastated and incredible and fit that that guy was designed for that system. He is not designed for Ange Postecoglou's system. He, he just simply is a. We tried him in the centre. We tried him on the right. We tried him on the left, and unfortunately, he just can't do the job that he required. I think he's still a good player, a very good player, but there's certain players that fit certain systems, and Dejan Kulusevski does not fit the system and the style of football we're trying to play. And I think he needs to move. I think he needs to move to. Uh, to a club that will play style of football and he will bring in some funds that will be available to Ange. So uh, 
as much as I like him and enjoyed seeing him in the first season, I just don't see him ever being able to fit into an Ange Postecoglou system. See, I, I, I see it differently. First of all, yesterday he was terrible on the, in the first half. I thought, uh, I thought he looks very uncomfortable playing on that left hand side. I didn't think it, it was he was um, he wanted to do what was required of a mid, of a winger on that side. I actually thought when he moved over to the right, he was a different player. I thought he looked a lot more comfortable there and he looked a lot better and he was actually a lot more threatening once he moved over to the right-hand side. I still think he's got a lot to give. Um, I think this season, I thought he started off the season really, really strongly in my opinion and it's really tailed off quite badly. Unfortunately, to be fair, a lot like a lot of our team. No, I don't think he's the only one, yeah. but but he definitely has tailed off. And that is frustrating because I thought um, in the first half of the season, I actually think he was doing a very underrated job for the team. Uh, and actually, you know, the numbers are quite good. I think it was six goals and, and three assists in his first like 15 games or so. So he was quite uh, effective. And then he's t- tailed off quite badly. But I actually like the fact that I do look don't get me wrong I, I think we probably need another winger uh, in that position um, but I do like that he offers us something different I do like the fact that his what he offers is different to uh, what Brennan offers or what what, or what, a diff, what a winger with searing pace who, who loses the ball made more often offers I think he can keep the ball really well and we saw even against Arsenal how effective he can be I thought he played really really well that game and I think a lot of his work goes under the radar. I think a lot of people criticise him when he's maybe not getting goals and assists, but I think he does a lot of good work for the team, which I think Ange appreciates. The question is, where is his best position? That is a good question in this system. I see him as just, I just see him as a versatile player who can play multiple positions rather than someone who can't play either position, if you know what I mean. Um, I, I think he can be effective in the centre. He can be effective on the right. It just it depends what 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 the game calls for, and um, where he's at at the moment. So for me, I wouldn't look to sell him. I do think if a really good offer comes in, depending on what, what kind of offer it is, I would consider it. Um, but I, I think that I, for me, the the party line should be he's not for sale at the moment because I do think he's a very good player, and I do think as well. He's a player I can see moving on and, and doing fantastically as someone else and would regret selling him just because at a certain moment in time he hasn't been playing well. I think people get... he's a very He could be very frustrating, I think, Decky, because he gets himself in a lot of good positions and sometimes doesn't do enough with it. But I just feel like he um, the good he does outweighs the bad, in my opinion. And I think a lot of the good he does is um, maybe not as easy to point to. And I feel like... Um, I think we miss him when he doesn't play, I feel like, a lot of the time. I feel like when he doesn't play, I think I, f- I think we give the ball away too much and um, I think we do miss him a bit. So I would I, I would want to keep him. I don't think he needs a move, but I understand, you know, people looking for an attacker who needs to be a bit more effective. I kind of get that. So I'm not completely saying I rule out a move completely, but it has to be at a good price. I wouldn't sell him cheaply, essentially, is what I'm saying. Put it this way, so you look at it, you, you're talking about how we, we play different when he's off. I think we play better once he went off. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a triple substitution, so it wasn't just him that went off, and it's not, OK, there was a single sub, so we played better because Kulisewski was off. But we certainly look more attacking. We certainly look more dangerous once Kulisewski and the other... I can't remember who he went off with at the same time, but um, I think Basuma... Um, I think we looked we, we looked a lot better once that triple substitution was made. And listen, I know what you're saying. I think some of his hold up play has been brilliant and it's bringing up from the ball. But the other thing I'll add is I think as well, I don't know if you if you if you agree, I think some of this downfall in his form as well has come out since that interview that everyone spoke very, very highly of and when mm. he came out and spoke a lot, his form has seen, there's been a drastic dip since that time as well. I'm not saying they're, they're linked, but there has been definitely uh, a drop in form for him. And like you said, I think if he goes to another team and plays in a similar system to what Conte asked, he will excel. He will absolutely excel. But you're saying not sell. I look at it as if we are going to sell. We look at some players early in the last year of their contract and we'll just try and move them on cheap or for whatever we can. Kulisevsky could bring in a good chunk of change. 
which could go on to buy someone that can do what Andrew's asking and make the team stronger. So I, I understand why some people want to keep him, but for me, I just don't see it working. I think he needs a change just as much to benefit him as we need a player that can play Andrew's system. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, so look, we in terms of uh, the game, though, yes, obviously, yeah, we'll talk about Decky. Um, that first half was was really frustrating. I thought, obviously, Burnley had a really couple of really big openings. Obviously, first of all, the goal, which I thought our defending for that was atrocious. I think, what, well, Santa Burge was able to ride three challenges, meekly, meek all challenges. To be fair, I think he did get a bit lucky because Johnson did get back on him and uh, did win the ball, but didn't fall to a Spurs player. But then I thought, um, I can't remember who else challenged him. I think it was uh, Porro challenged him. Uh, Saar challenged him. And I thought they were both weak challenges. I could have done a lot better. And then we were opened up like the Red Sea uh, with um, uh, Bryn Larson was able to get in behind Ollie Skip um, with, with getting the run on him. And it was, and obviously it was a good finish. They also had that header at the back post, which is a consistent problem, isn't it? That back post. Every single time yeah. a team gets a crossing position, they have, uh, you know, I did a freeze frame on... Uh, on that moment when they get the cross in. And Porro has, is marking two players at that back post. And that is a consistent problem with this defending. Um, I think against Liverpool, pretty much all four goals came from back post uh, chances. Yeah. Um, you look at the Chelsea game, the first goal came from another back post. Like, it's a consistent problem with us. And that, for me, is not something like... When I look at, when I look at that problem, like... When we're talking about Ange's philosophy and Ange's way of playing, unless, like, I don't see him doing anything to rectify that issue. Like, we're consistently overloaded in the back post and teams are consistently making chances out of that. Now, is that something that we're going to change down the line? Like, are we going to change the tactics a bit so, you know, we get an extra body in the back so we start, you know, not being outnumbered in that position? Or is a, is a midfielder like a winger going to be tracking all the way back so we're not being overloaded? Or is this just a quirk of Andrew's system where if you get at the back post, there are going to be chances, but hopefully during the course of the game, that won't happen too often and we'll out outscore you. Like, I'm really starting to worry about that situation because... That seems to be something which is consistently happening. Uh, we're consistently conceding chances from it. And yet, that it seems as though Ange is okay with it. Ange is okay with that happening. Yeah. He does, he does. And listen, like you said with Part of the Red Sea, it, I, I, I like it to like a, a hot knife through butter. It was, it's was. it been too easy, too simple to get to our back line and, and throw on goal. Um what I will say with Porro and Skippy, and obviously Skippy people were putting a lot of fault for the goal, but as well as others because of his not getting back. But you know what? I saw it on, I don't know if it was on Twitter or, or some social media site, and it, it made me think as well, and it, it, they were bang on right. People were trying to say Oli Skip was at fault for the goal because it, it wasn't Oli Skip's fault. And the reason I say it's not Oli Skip's fault, Destiny Adoji was told to, to do this. All the left-backs and the right-backs have been told to push up and give that space. So, as um, as Postacoglu said with Basuma against Man City, he said, I'm asking the players to do this. I'm asking the players to do this. Uh, Oli was just doing what, what, what uh, as Postacoglu had instructed him to do. But doing this is making the back post when they're attacking down the other flanks very, very, very open. And there's only so much you can do in it. Is this going to change after the summer window when Ange has more of the players he wants in? You can only hope so. But it is concerning, Simi, like you said, that this is a repeated issue over and over again. And we just don't seem to address it. We just don't seem as... You watch him week in, week out. I will say the last couple of games, it does look like we've worked on set pieces. It mm -hmm. does look like there's been an improvement slightly there. And it's not been every single set piece kamikaze, uh, kamikaze defending. So it does look like they've done something, but now it seems to be now you need to work on the back post because that is becoming a cause for concern, like you said. It's been a problem for me all season since day one, that back post. And I don't know whether that's just the quirk of how Ange wants to play is that we're going to be vulnerable there. You know, no system is perfect. Or is it, are we doing something wrong 
which is which is um, causing us to be continually vulnerable there. That's what I I can't work out at the moment um, when it comes to that. But you know they got a good chance from that, and Vicario had to make a brilliant save uh, to keep us. It was at nil nil at the time. Um, yeah. And look, we did get back in the game for a brilliant goal from Porro. Um, and well, to be fair, you know, we did concede chances, but we had chances as well. You know, Johnson at the back post should have scored really, shouldn't he? And there was also a bit of a thing yesterday where Burnley kept making mistakes, yet we didn't take advantage of it. Happened a number of times where the goalkeeper would get, uh, make uh, some mistakes in our third, would win it high up the pitch with uh, really good opportunities to create plentiful chances. And we didn't take full advantage of them whatsoever and I wonder if that's just something where if the team is high on confidence we would that you know that would be different and we would take advantage of those is it a quality issue in the front line where uh they're, they're not good enough to take full advantage but that was definitely something because what Johnson had that chance where he won it high up and then he didn't square it he tried to go for the near post which I thought was quite clever but he just couldn't pull it off unfortunately and he hit he hit the side netting Kulu had a similar one in the second half where he picked the ball up inside the penalty area, but its finish was weak as well. So um, what do you put that down to, the, the fact that we can't seem to take full advantage of the mistakes that we're forcing? So, so first of all, what I will say is I came on the fan uh, the, the fan show yesterday and actually said I think the Burnley goalkeeper played very well. I, I, just, I got that wrong as in his distribution was shambolic, but there was a couple of saves, like the one from Saar... Um, that he did make that were very, very good saves. Um, this is a problem. I think I sent you the uh, I sent you on WhatsApp. The the stats showed that we had five big chances, and we missed or didn't take advantage of all five, which is a which is a, a, a concern because chances were given to us, and even in the games that we've lost in the last four, we have had opportunities, but we just haven't been ruthlessness ruthless ruthless enough. Um, and it is, a, it is a cause for concern because if we were punishing these op, uh, opportunities, we may have got Champions League. We may have been in a, a much better position, a healthier position. So it is another cause for concern. And I, I wanted to mention when you said the uh, the set pieces uh, and back post, Ange Postacoglu has obviously come out and mentioned that he's going to change his staff as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the, 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 the managerial staff. I think that's going to be very, very telling to see if he is addressing certain things. Um, but yeah, not taking those opportunities yesterday was a concern because if it had been a better team, they would have punished us for not taking those chances. Definitely. I th I, to be fair, obviously we did get the goal through Porro. Brilliant um, a hammer, hammer yeah. strike from the, at the near post. And then, um, you know, we go into, um, go into the second half 1-1. And I thought, to be fair, this for the whole second half, you know, I thought we moved Decky back over to the right. Um, and I thought we, we dominated, to be honest. I thought Burnley had barely any opportunities compared to the first half. We were, we were, um, we penned them in. We created lots and lots of chances. I did think we probably looked a bit better once we moved um, Johnson back to the right, put, put Scarlett on, moved Son to the left, got Ben Tenkel on as well. Um, and then all of a sudden, we looked a lot fresher. Maybe it was because we were playing against tired legs. Burnley also had to come out of it because the, we, they knew that unless they got a winner, they were going to be relegated, so they had to maybe open up a bit and, you know, cause a bit more... Um, they had to cause a bit more caution to the... throw a bit more caution to the wind. Um, but we did look good for those for the last half an hour, um, created lots of opportunities. Um, and what did you feel like, you know, we got a really good look at Skip um, Scarlett for those last 20 minutes. Um, we created lots of opportunities. Son on the left as well was providing lots of threat. Um, how did you, what did you feel? Did you feel like that winner was definitely coming in that in the last 20 minutes? Yeah, it, it, it looked that way, Sim. And I've got to say, as soon as Sun went on the left, he looked a different player in the game. He looked more comfortable. He looked more uh, dangerous. Dane Scarlo, who I've obviously been on this channel, spoken said I'm a fan of, um, came on. I think he had a very big impact, both doing his work responsibly uh, defensive-wise and getting back and winning free kicks, as well as showing great intelligence and awareness and making the space for Van der Ven to, uh, to to score the winner. And also could have had a goal if that cross had just been a little bit better near the end. And he looked a threat. He looked a threat for the brief time he came on. And you know what, for the last two, I, I would love to say for Man City, he starts up front with Sun on the left and whoever you want to play on the right. 
I, I really would because I think some will have a lot more. When Dane Scarlett has played in the previous years when he's played in the Europa League or the Conference League, it may have been, he's been playing with not the A team around him. So we haven't been able to see him. Let's see him get some minutes with the, the, the first teamers around him, the Madisons, the Suns, and let's see what he can do. Because I was very impressed with Scarlett when he came on. Very yeah, I thought he definitely looked a threat. Um, if it wasn't for some last gasp defending from Burnley, he definitely could have had a goal or two with some of his runs. I did. I was also, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say frustrated, but I was. Um, I did think there was a few moments where the ball comes into him and he, and he gave it away sloppily, and there was a moment where he where he had a moment had a chance to shoot on his left foot and he delayed it and ended up trying to go on his right and the ch chance was gone. But I definitely felt just his presence was causing more problems for Burnley than than what Son was doing. Um, obviously, the difference was Son was kind of coming deep to collect the ball, wasn't he? Whereas Scarlett was kind of hanging, pinning the back to a bit, back, a bit back a bit and asking a different question of them. So I did think that was it was a positive impact as much. I don't think individually he did too much great, but I just think his presence definitely impacted the game and his different kind of movements um, was definitely asking different questions of the um, Burnley back line. And also we did end up getting that winner late yeah. in the game. Uh, and that was when Van der Ven moved to left back and he makes that run inside and he finished it. I have to say, I've seen it back. That is like someone, someone on, on Twitter called it a Haaland-esque finish. I mean, that is right in the corner. Very little backlift as well. How he manoeuvred his body to get that left foot strike as well. And a brilliant first touch to cut inside as well from Van der Ven. That was really a yep. finish of a £50 million striker, wasn't it? I mean, unbelievable. Coupled that with his finish against Forrest. And maybe he's got more ability in that, in that left foot than we, even we gave him credit for. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I, as a fellow left footer myself, I, I, I appreciate left, left, left footy plays. But like I said, the, the, the awareness, the intelligence and the ability, most importantly, to move and pivot onto his left and put it there was, uh, was, was brilliant. Uh, it was like a, a De Bruyne, a Cole Palmer, like a, like a cultured uh, striker of the ball, putting it away. And it was in the one place the keeper couldn't get to it. And I didn't know, someone mentioned it today on my show, the Wolfsburg, he occasionally plays striker, not as a, a starting striker. So he has got, and it also explains the way he scored that goal against uh, Forrest, because that wasn't a centre-back's finish. That was a, an incredible finish. He's just a magnificent player. Um, and you know what I'm loving about him? He is loving life at Tottenham. He is loving the attention he's getting from the fans. The commentator said, this is why we love him. This is why they love him or why he's so loved here. He, he's just a joy to behold. He is just, he is just remarkable. And I, I, the, 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 the scary thing is, he's only going to get better than what he is now. And if that's what we've seen in the first season, my God, next season, he's, I, can't, I can't wait. He's just, I, I love him. Yeah, he's been astonishing. And obviously, yeah, he played that last 20 minutes of left back. I thought he did a good job. I thought it wasn't just the goal. I thought he was in some really good underlapping runs into the box. He was providing a threat down the left-hand side. And with that ability, he has that left foot. He clearly has ability to, you know, contribute in the final third as well, it seems. And the, just the way he took that goal, the composure and the finish... Uh, which he, and it was well, he had so little backlift. I don't know how he got the power to get that into the corner. Yeah. If you watch it, but um, the finish again, the power he gets and the curl right into the corner, it really is astonishing how he was able to pull that off uh, for a centre back. I don't see any centre back being able to do that. And he the way he touched it inside as well, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, strike. And it just begs the question what he can't do, Mickey van der Ven, um, the, with, the, with the quality he has. So I'm super excited about what he's got to offer. Offer. I would personally play him a left back based on that um, on Tuesday, to be honest, because I feel like, well, obviously depending on if we want to win the game or not, but um, I, I would, I would, yeah, I would, yeah. I would play him a left back. I think that would give us the best um, chance of getting a result, in my opinion, based on what I'm, I'm seeing from him, because I do think he would also maybe not play it in the same way. He'll probably cover the back line a bit more if he was playing left back. Um, so was, I thought that was a really good experiment and I thought it, it, it did really, uh, he did really well there. And um, I thought Dragosheen obviously did all right when he came on as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of team he plays on, uh, on Tuesday. But in terms of the overall picture, look, it was a good win. Um, 
I don't think you can learn too yeah. much from the game itself, personally, but it was good to get the three points, albeit we have kind of struggled in a way when you look at it now this season. Sheffield United, the three teams who are going down, Sheffield United at home, we were 1-0 down, we had to score two late winners. Luton at home, 1-0 down, and we had to score a goal with five minutes to go from Son. And now Burnley at home, 1-0 down, and we had to score a late goal again, this time from Mickey van der Ven. So um, definitely a pattern there, isn't there, Brian? <laughs> again, <laughs> us against bomb free hasn't been the easiest games this season, has it? No, and just uh, also add to that, me and Ben were there. We also went 1-0 down away at Burnley. Mm. Well, obviously, we, we then absolutely annihilated them, but we conceded conceded first there. Um, Luton, we went down with Basuma. Uh, we played 10 men. Um, so it has definitely been a struggle to uh, to get the job done with these guys, apart from, obviously, the 5-2 away where we were exquisite. Mm. Um but it, it, again, it's been, it's been an issue there. there. There's certain things that we can take very, very positively out of this season. But things like you've just said that against the bottom three and taking two points out of 18 from Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, these are things that need to be worked on and improved. But but like you said, it's the, the penultimate home game of the season. Thankfully, we got that winning feeling again. And uh, lots to look forward to in the summer, but things need to be worked on.